Vipin, this is Tina. Can you hear me? Hi, Vipin, this is Tina. Can you hear me? I think you're muted. Self muted. She went away.
Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, ME7834 Protocol Conformance and Acceptance. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You have the opportunity to submit text questions in the questions pane. We will read the questions at the end of today's presentation. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive an email within 24 to 48 hours after today's recording. I'd like now to present Vipin Pandey. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for taking time to join our session today. Uh, just a brief introduction, although you might have seen the details. My name is Bipin, and I am responsible for product marketing of Andritsu's protocol and uh, carrier acceptance test products. So today's presentation slides <coughs> cover our ME7834 protocol confirmance and acceptance system. I will be covering these four topics in my slides. So we'll begin with a brief update on the industry in general. Then we'll talk about Anritsu's 5G product portfolio. Then spend some time on the ME7834NR product itself. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about the milestones that we have achieved on 5G protocol confirmance testing in the industry. So to begin with, I will start with the current status of 5G deployment. As we all know, 5G has taken off very fast all over the world. We have a number of operators today who are deploying or have already deployed 5G networks. The precise number as we expect at the end of 
a quarter one 20 was 70 operators have invested in 5g worldwide we already have commercial 5g networks in a large part of this world so if you look at the little map in the bottom right hand corner of the screen all the red shaded regions already have a commercial 5g network and all the blue regions are the ones which are investing in 5g in some ways they are either deploying have deployed or are basically trialing 5g networks so in history so far 5g has been the most quickly deployed access technology so far now if we talk about the different flavors of 5g uh, we have deployments which come in the sub six frequency range and in the millimeter wave range so if you look at the upper part of my picture it shows the different regions the blue dots show the regions which have deployments in both sub six and millimeter wave prominently north america which is us japan south korea russia these are the regions which have already deployed millimeter wave networks the white dots show the regions which are currently focusing on sub six frequencies only so europe middle east uh, south africa and of course china which has both the networks and australia so overall every region has made their priorities on the deployment of different network types but pretty much everybody is investing in 5g now something to mention uh, europe has already as i said got a number of networks in sub six frequency range but they have decided to pick up 26 gigahertz for millimeter wave deployment which we are expecting by the end of this year apart from that you can see a large number of countries already have commercial deployments in these sub six frequency ranges for 5g moving on um, we take a quick look at the status of 3gpp standardization so we work quite closely with the industry and the different 3gpp bodies that work on defining specifications are listed on this diagram so we have the ran groups the different ran groups uh, ran 2 which defines the core specifications which define how the networks work and then we have ran 5 which is responsible for definition of the test specifications which define the test cases and the test plans which are implemented by and with Sue and other test vendors and below that we have a line for Etsy Etsy creates the abstract test suite based on the RAND 5's definition of test cases and finally we have the certification bodies which is the GCF and PTCRB so if you look at today's status RAND 5 is the key body which is currently defining test cases for the different work items for 5G release 15 and Etsy is creating TTCN or abstract test suite for these defined test cases um, as many of you would be aware certifications for 5G devices have already started uh, there are a number of devices which have gone through certification testing and including Anritsu we have a number of test vendors who have already obtained what we call CEC or certification entry criteria for their test systems so I will be talking about the details of the test items that we support on our platform in the next slides when we go into the product um, a quick update on the detailed activity of the RAN5. So RAN5, as I said, is the, the 3GPP 
group which defines the test specifications and here you can see the status of the different work item completion targets across the different RAND meetings. So the last RAND meeting, which was RAND 586, which was held in February this year. And basically you can see there are a lot of greens over here, which is 100% target completions. And a lot of the areas which we had started with a year ago for protocol testing, RF confirmance testing, have already reached completion. So all in all, the progress of 5G test specification is moving as fast as the network deployment is moving. So everything is going at a very fast pace. Uh, so that's a quick update of the industry. And with that, I would like to quickly present Anritsu's 5G product portfolio. So we have products which can help with testing of devices, of our networks in all different states. Many of these products are already in the market. So we have vector network analyzers, signal analyzers, spectrum masters already available and being used. Our core system simulator product for 5G testing is the MT8000A, which is also the cornerstone of all the large system products that we are going to uh, talk about shortly and we have also introduced a range of OTA chambers because as you would know 5G relies heavily on millimeter wave and for testing millimeter wave OTA is the most is the only option. Out of this uh, we have the two uh, confirmance test systems the RF confirmance test systems ME7873 and the protocol confirmance test system is the ME7834. And this is the system that I'm going to focus on in more detail in my upcoming slides. We also have production test uh, products. Basically, uh, these are device test products in production stage and post-production stage. We have products for sub-6 as well as millimeter wave testing. So all in all, we have a complete portfolio for testing of 5G devices. So focusing in more detail on the ME7834 NR PCT product. So we started with the ME7834 product, which was one of the earliest protocol test systems back in 2005. And Ritsu was the first company to introduce confirmance test products for UMTS. So we launched this product in 2005 and we had support for 3G and then HSTPA, HSPA plus. Then this product evolved into the ME7834L in 2010, which was our first LTE confirmance test system. And this provided coverage for 3G and LTE and legacy IRAT test cases for protocol test cases. In 2015, we launched the upgraded version, which was ME7834LA. LA stands for LT Advanced. And this system supported higher order carrier aggregation and MIMO in addition to all the legacy features already supported on the L system. And now finally in 2018, we have launched the ME7834NR, which is the 5G NSA SA addition to the existing LA system. So this is the new system we're going to talk about today. But in essence, the ME7834 product is an enhancement of the same base product with the same concept of supporting protocol confirmance and acceptance testing. And at Anritsu, our target is to always stay ahead of the technology evolution. The ME7834 product, as you can see, has been in the market for a very long time. Uh, we have a number of deployments already of this system across different customer types. 
we have operators or carriers who are using these systems for confirmance and acceptance testing in their labs. Uh, we have different test houses who already own this system for performing device confirmance tests and pre-confirmance testing. Uh, we have a number of terminal uh, companies um, who are using our system for pre-confirmance and in some cases confirmance testing. And we also work with chipsets very closely. All the leading chipsets in this world are using the ME7834 system. We have been working with legacy as well as we have now started with 5G. So right from 3G time, we have support for technologies like TDLTE. Uh, we have support for China mobile acceptance test cases, and we have support of the GTI acceptance plan. So all these test plans are supported on the same test platform, which is ME7834. Um, we started IMS with LTE, and we were the first system to support features like emergency services and SRVCC. And since then, we have continued to maintain our lead in IMS-related test packages for carriers as well as for certification testing. So out of all the uh, certification bodies, you can see the different work items for test packages that we support today on the ME7834 protocol test system. In addition to this, we also support IMS Volti test packages for the different carrier acceptance test programs. And we are aggressively working towards supporting the IMS packages for 5G. We have um, very good coverage in the legacy technologies uh, in both LTE, uh, TDLT, and FDDLT. And we have very good interworking with the older legacy technologies like GSM and CDMA 2000. Apart from that, we are also an approved supplier for China mobile ecosystem in China. So in summary, um, if you look at the legacy test coverages with UMTS, our system supports 100% test coverage in GCF and PTCRB for the release 99 to release six work items. We have almost 100% test coverage in the release seven work items for UMTS. And we have 100% test coverage in the DCHS DPA test packages for release eight. So even though we are focusing on the new test items on 5G, on LTE Advance, we have a complete solution for the legacy test packages as well. Talking about LTE Advanced Pro, which was the uh, back end of LTA program, we were the first test vendor to introduce features like license assisted access or LAA. And we have been leading the validation and approval of test cases right from the inception of these packages in GCF and PTCRB. Also on the IoT test plans, which is release 13, we have complete coverage of all the work items defined by both GCF and PTCRB, which includes the enhancements to network, which includes EMTC, enhanced machine type communication, and NBIoT. So all the mandatory certification required for IoT is supported on the ME7834 test platform. With that, I will move on in more detail to talk about the new NR platform, 
So ME7834NR has been upgraded to support 5G RAT in addition to the LTE Advanced LTE and the legacy IRAT. The current system supports the entire release 15 of 5G NR and LTE release 8 to 13. We support both non-standalone and standalone mode. And basically, we also support carrier acceptance test case programs for a number of global carriers that you can see over here. So we have Japanese carriers, American carriers, Korean carriers, Chinese carriers, and pretty much everyone that has a carrier acceptance program. This entire structure is supported on the same ME7834NR platform. By the way, this is uh, registered as test platform 251 in GCF and PTCRB. A little bit more detail on the, the capabilities and the structure of the system. So the system contains two of our MD8430 signaling testers and an MD8000 signaling tester for 5G. This particular model shown here is a sub-6 system, so it supports all the defined sub-6 frequency ranges and is currently available for conducted mode testing for sub-6 devices. The millimeter wave system is a small upgrade to the sub-6 system, and in addition to the sub-6 frequencies, this system also supports the millimeter wave frequencies. The addition, as you can see here, is the millimeter wave OTA chamber and the converters which upconvert the frequencies which are fed into this chamber. Uh, the ME7834 uh, protects the investments. So if there are customers who have already purchased a system, whether it is an L or an LA, they have the ability to upgrade in steps to the ME7834NR system. And that is shown over here in this diagram. So the NR system is a simple upgrade of adding our 5G network simulator, which is MT8000A. And when a millimeter wave upgrade, which is a chamber and converters is applied, we get the full sub six and millimeter wave capable 7834 NR system. So in summary, if you have any of these old legacy systems, you can easily upgrade to the 5G ME7834 NR system. Uh, just a quick uh, four points on why you would consider the Anritsu system for your testing. Anritsu has maintained a very strong commitment to our customers. We have been in the market since the start of EMTS, and we have always maintained our leading roadmap for all technologies. We have one single platform that delivers all the technologies and can be used for both confirmance and acceptance testing. We are providing the industry leading approved test cases for 5G NR and I will show some more details on the on the capabilities as we go further into the slides. And we have maintained a very high standard of excellence on our test platforms which make our system extremely reliable and convenient to use. So with that, I would like to spend some time talking about the achievements that we have in the industry on the test case numbers for 5G. So the first achievement, uh, PVG88, which is a PTCRB meeting, the, the last meeting, uh, we achieved the highest number of validations across all the NSA and SA test cases. For US operators, which specifically target PTCRB, 
we have maintained leading coverage on all their test requirements so these are specific bands which are deployed in the us and again and Ritsu has maintained leading coverage in all these bands. On GCF, we are not far behind. We have maintained leading coverage on all the US operator requirements for GCF operators as well. So in summary, we have actually maintained leading coverage across all the required items for 5G. And we've been staying ahead of the technology curve. So that was a very quick update from my side. If there are any questions at this time, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Vipin. Um, I have a few questions. Okay. Uh, first one, uh, what new features do you foresee being supported for conformance testing in 3GPP release 16? Okay, so that's a very good point. Uh, 3GPP release 16 is defining some new items in 5G, specifically the uh, areas like UR LLC and the enhanced uh, mobile uh, enhanced MTC. So we expect these features to come in in the end of by end of this year. And the good part is our platform, the ME7834 NR, is already capable of supporting the underlying features. So it is for us just a question of supporting the test packages when they are available from Etsy. <clears throat> okay, our next question. 5G conformance items are being developed very fast. How do you ensure that Enritsu PCT is always able to support latest industry requirements? Okay, so um, we are working very closely with a number of chipset uh, customers who are actually the leaders in the industry. The industry roadmaps and features are sort of set by the carriers and followed by this chipset. And since we collaborate with this chipset, uh, we always have these latest features. So if there is a new feature which comes in, our chipset partners are the first to implement them. And since Anritsu collaborates closely with all the chipsets in this world, we have always got the latest features. Okay, and right now the last question, has the recent situation related to COVID-19 affected development or support? Um, yes, it has slightly, but in a very positive way. So uh, we have been uh, developing our products out of a number of locations worldwide. We have offices in the US. We have R&D centers in Japan, in other locations in the Far East, uh, in the UK where I'm based. And uh, we have been used to remote working, but with this COVID-19 and the lack of travel, we have had to enhance that capability even more. What we have had to even do is work with our customers on remote collaborations and partnerships. But overall, this has only resulted in a positive impact on our development capability. I think not there has been no negative effect at all. We had a learning exercise, but it worked very well. <clears throat> Great, another question. Can ME7834NR also support LTE UMTS in one system? Uh, yes, definitely. So the ME7834NR will support everything that the old legacy system supported in addition to 5G. So yes, UMTS, LTE, LTE Advanced, all are supported on the 7834NR. Okay, another question. The test cases just approved at the last PVG meeting, I assume they will be reviewed and hopefully accepted at the next PTCRB meeting, correct? That is true, yes. We expect all the test cases to be accepted in the next PTCRB meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, don't have any more questions. So I wanna thank everyone for attending.
And on behalf of Anritsu Company and our presenter, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. This concludes our webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.